Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this image. To capture a particular point in time repeatedly is almost impossible without the use of a camera trigger. And in order to freeze motion, a very short flash duration is also required. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, so this is what I've got set up so far. Uh, I have this table with a piece of black cloth on it. Uh, and on the middle of the table, I've got this fish tank. And that's about half full of water. So to start with, what I'm going to do is use this um, Profoto uh, flash system, which is a two-pack system, two-part system. So I'll just plug this head into this pack. Now I'm using this on purpose because it's capable of giving a very, very short flash duration. But if you don't have access to this sort of equipment, a little later on in the video, I will show you exactly how you can do that, almost the same thing, with just a normal flash gun. There are a few compromises, but we'll come to that a bit later. OK, so as I said at the uh, beginning of the video, one of the things about doing this sort of uh, photography is to be able to capture the same moment in time over and over again. And to do that, what I'm going to do is use a camera trigger. So here I have uh, a Myops uh, camera trigger, which I've attached to this retort stand. So I'm just going to place this about here somewhere. And for a source of light to trigger that, I'm going to use uh, this laser pointer. So I'll just pop this at the other side like this. Now putting all these things on retort stands like this makes it very easy uh, to set it up. So with these bits in place, uh, the next thing to do would be to um, just suspend uh, the subject, which is this strawberry, uh, in more or less the right place so that it gives me a focus point for the camera. So once again, I'm just going to attach an arm to this retort stand, just like this. And the idea of this is that it will be in the centre of the tank. And I'm just going to place it so that it's just touching the water, like that. Okay, just wind that round there and secure that onto the stand. Okay, and now this will give me something to focus on um, when I come to set up the shot, which is the next stage, really. Okay, so to capture all these images, I'm going to use this full frame digital SLR with a 24 to 70 zoom on the front of it and a flash sync trigger on the top. Now, the whole thing is tethered into Capture One software, so it's easy to see the results as we go along. OK, so I'll just pop this on the tripod. Right, and we'll just frame that up. So the first thing I'm going to do is just move that to the 70 millimeter end of the zoom lens, like so, and we'll just focus that up. There we are. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just wind this up on the centre column of the tripod here until the horizon line is just in the right place. Just like that. OK. So with that all done, uh, next thing to do would be just to turn the camera on. Uh, and we'll just grab a test exposure just to make sure that we're not getting too much contamination from the house lights. So the software has recognised the camera, and you can see it's in full manual mode. Uh, 1 250th of a second, which is the flash sync speed for that camera. 100 ISO, and at the moment I've got an aperture of f8. But actually, uh, I think uh, f11 might be a better aperture to use, which will give me a bigger depth of field. So I'm just going to change that, like so. OK, so with all these bits set, I'll just grab that test exposure and there you can see that there is um, no contamination from the house lights. So any lights that we add 
with flash will be the only light which affects the image. OK, so with all that set, the next thing to do is to um, set up the uh, camera trigger. In order to do that, what I'm going to do is just turn on this uh, laser pointer, like so, and just adjust this initially so that it's pointing more or less at the flash trigger. Now I should be able to just move the bar here until the string also catches the laser. I'm actually going to move it slightly past that, like so. There we are. So now I know that when I drop the strawberry from the end of this bar, it's going to be more or less in that position. OK, so with that on, what I'll do now is turn on the camera trigger. And with all these things these days, it comes with an app which you can uh, control with your phone. So I'll just set it up to do what I want. So I'll start up the um, MyOps application. And under Device Sensor Modes, uh, I'll just select Laser. OK, so that comes up with uh, this display, so I can set the threshold. And I can set this quite low, because I have a very good laser source. And it's a very short distance away. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is um, possibly set a delay. Now I'm just going to leave the delay at zero for, for the moment, um, just so that I can uh, show exactly what happens as we go on. Uh, and we just want to take one frame at a time. OK, so with all that uh, set, uh, I'll set the Go button like this. And we'll just test that without the camera connected. So there we go. You can see that we're getting a response. OK. So with all that running, I can dispense with the uh, phone. We don't need that anymore. And using this extension cable, I can just plug this into the camera. So that goes down here, and goes in there like that. So again, just to test that out to make sure it's working, um, I'll just interrupt the beam with my hand, and it should trigger the camera, like so. That's good. Right, so with all that done, next thing to do would be to set up the, uh, the light. So we'll just turn that on. Now, initially, I've got this set to an arbitrary energy level, uh, about halfway through the range. Uh, so we'll turn on the flash sync trigger as well. And with everything going, uh, I'll grab an image and just see what we get. OK, so we can see from this that the exposure is not bad. Um, but there's quite a few things that are um, not quite right with this image, one of which is that you can clearly see the camera, my hand, etc., in the uh, in the picture here, and also uh, this is a little harsh. Uh, the lighting is um, pretty harsh as it is at the moment. So what I want to do first is uh, I'll just soften that down a little by using uh, some diffusion material suspended from a C stand. So what I'm going to do just pop this on here, so I'm just going to place this in here, just like this, just to soften that off a little. There we are. Get that in a bit like that. There we are. OK, so with that in place now, what I'll do is, instead of standing directly uh, behind the camera, um, I can trigger the camera shutter from the software. So I'll just do that. There, that's better. So you can see from this image that the lighting is a little softer. 
but you can also see that we still have the image of the camera in the back there. It's actually a reflection um, on the front face of the glass here. So in order to get rid of that, I'm just going to flag off uh, this corner uh, of, the, uh, of the set. And I'm just going to use a piece of card which I've just clamped to a, a piece of wood to make it stand up on its own. So we're just going to place that in there, like so. So with that in place, let's grab another image. There we go, that seems to have got rid of most of it. Uh, there is still this bit at the top here, uh, and what we can do for that is just using uh, a piece of cloth. I'm just going to place that over the top of the flash sync trigger, uh, which will get rid of any of the little bits that happen to be there, like so. OK. Try that. There. Excellent. So now we have uh, our strawberry, um, and the background is relatively clean. But I think I'd like to just fill in a little on this side of the strawberry. Now, in order to do that, I'm just going to use another piece of card, uh, just a plain piece of white card, uh, and I'm just going to place this on the side of the tank here so it reflects some of the light back onto the other side of the strawberry, like so. So with that in place, give that another go. There we are. Yes, that's filled it in quite nicely. Uh, you can see the difference if I go to the previous image. This is what we had before, and this is what we've got now. This area over here can be retouched out later. So with that bit done, it's time to test the whole system. So just so I can set it up without it triggering the camera, I'll just stop the uh, camera trigger for the time being, and I'll just remove the clamp. So now if I start up the uh, camera trigger again, hold the strawberry on the end, and just drop it. OK. Now that captured uh, two images uh, because the splash was so high that it went up and uh, broke the beam again. But you can see we've missed the strawberry completely. It's down here somewhere. And in the second image, uh, the strawberry is on the bottom of the tank and everything else has uh, dissipated away. Now this is because this camera has a mirror. So the mirror has to move out of the way before the shutter can open. Uh, and that takes some time. So in order to um, make it a lot more instant, uh, what I can do is lock the mirror up. By the way, if you're using a mirrorless camera, you won't have this problem at all. OK, so just in the software here, if I come down to Mirror Lockup, I can just click on this button here, and I'll select Press Twice to Shoot. What that will do is the first time it's triggered, it will lock the mirror up, and the second time, it will actually fire the shutter. So let's give that a try. First of all, I'll retrieve the strawberry. Now normally, between each shot, I would clean the front glass. Uh, but because this is just a test, uh, I won't bother this time. So I'll hold the strawberry in position. I'll trigger it to lock the mirror up. And now I'll drop it. There we go. Good. So on this image, you can see that we've caught the strawberry in midair before it's got into the water. Now this system is very repeatable. So if I just do this again, it will be in exactly the same position. There we are. So allowing for different positions, different starting positions of the strawberry, the ending position is pretty accurate. So with that done, what we need to do now is introduce a delay so that the strawberry has time to hit the water and the splash comes up. Uh, so what I can do is I'll just stop the trigger. And once again, open the app on the phone. 
and this time go to delay and initially I'll make that um, 25 milliseconds like so and we'll start that off again there we go okay so with that done retrieve the strawberry get rid of the excess water and I'll just put that on the end here lock the mirror up and off we go there we are so now the strawberry is entering the water which is what we want uh, so it's best just to try this a few times just to see what we get uh, so I'll clean the front of the tank and we'll have a few attempts and see what happens so we'll lock it up and drop the strawberry There we are, and you can see from these images just how repeatable they are. Okay, so this is quite a nice uh, image of the strawberry uh, which has been caught just at the right point in time. Right, so that was using the Studio Pack. What I'll do now is replace all that uh, with a normal speed light or flash gun, this sort of thing and we'll have another go. Okay, so here I have the flash gun and I've got this stand with a hot shoe on the top and I've also got a flash sink receiver so that I can uh, just plug this into the side of the uh, flash gun like so. That will then trigger off the same uh, trigger that I have on the top of the camera. Right, so we'll just pop that on there I'll just place this in about the same place as we had the other light. Okay, so now with that flash gun on, uh, what I can do is use the strawberry again, and we'll just give this a try. So I'll lock the camera up, and we'll drop the strawberry. There you go. Now you can see the difference, or hopefully you should be able to see the difference, that all these are now little streaks instead of points of water. That's because the flash duration is actually quite long. But you can make flash duration very short on this type of speed light uh, simply by reducing the energy. So at the moment this is set to um, half energy. So if I just change that to 16th energy, obviously it's going to be uh, considerably dimmer. And the difference between half and 16 is four stops. But I don't want to change the uh, aperture, so the other thing I can change is the sensitivity. So I'll take that from 100 to 800, which should compensate. But obviously the other thing that will happen is that it's now much more sensitive, so it will pick up all the house lights. So the other compromise you've got to do is turn the house lights out. OK, so with those new settings, and we'll give it another go. There we are, that seems to have worked quite well. You can see that these are now almost uh, round blobs, which is what you want. It makes it very sharp. So it just show, goes to show what can be achieved uh, with uh, a very modest uh, speed light. So with all that captured, what I'll do now is just go into Photoshop and do the bare minimum of post-production. OK, so here we are in Photoshop. And this is the image that I've decided to go forward with. Um, so what I'm going to do is, first of all, just make a copy of this file. So the way I prefer to do that is just to right-click on the layer, go down to Duplicate Layer, and ask for a new document. I would we'll just call this Splash. OK, uh, so with that done, I can get rid of the camera original. Uh, and this is what I'm going to edit. 
So the first thing to do is just to have a look at the image and decide which bits of the uh, splashes I actually want to keep. Uh, now we've done this on a black background on purpose uh, so that it's fairly easy to retouch it out. Uh, so just to give a bit more redundancy what I'm going to do is just add a new layer like that and then on this new layer I'm just going to paint out all the bits that I don't want to keep. So I'll just find a paintbrush just make that quite soft. So initially I'm just going to get rid of these bits around the sides here, any of the bits that are out of focus really. And then just do the same on the underside of the horizon, just to get rid of any sparious parts that you might not want. There we are. So with that done, you can see the effect that's had. If I just turn that layer off, that's what we had before, and that's what we've got now. So finally, I'll just uh, select a crop. Uh, now I'm using this for video, so I'm using 16 by 9 as a ratio. Um, but you need to just pick something which suits your subject, really. Uh, and I think that is uh, pretty good, more or less, as it is. Uh, I might just tighten it up ever so slightly. There we are. And I'll just straighten that up a little, like so. There we are. That's good. So, there we have it. By having some repeatability in our capture and having a very short flash duration, we've been able to get this very sharp, very detailed image of a splash, which I think has worked very well. Okay, well I hope you like watching how I've done that image, and if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear, and don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and click the like button. Thank you very much for watching.